Okay, chapter nine, day two. <clears throat> um, we are working on conclusions of tests now and how to write them and some sentence frames. Okay. And we um, feel free to stop the video anytime you'll need to, because I'll kind of go too quickly if you don't stop it. All right. So working on stating a conclusion of a test, when you run a test, you're going to develop a p-value or you're going to develop an interval, one of the two. <clears throat> the general rule is if they ask you to run a test, get a p-value. If they ask you to do an interval, do an interval. That's generally the way, that's gen the general rule. Okay, now I have a mistake here. I want you to change these words. This should be outside. And this should be within. Okay, change those words, all right. Okay, so if the p-value is low, I'll change colors here. If the p-value is low, less than alpha, really small, like one, like half a percent, 0 0.005, if the p-value is low, then chance is probably not the reason you got the data. It's probably something is different, okay? If chance can't account for it, then you're going to say that HA is probably true. If chance can account for it, then you're gonna say, we're gonna, we're gonna fail to reject HL. There's no evidence here, okay? That's how the language is gonna go. Okay, so if the p-value was low, you will reject HO. Remember that makes a rhyme. If the p-value is low, you reject the hoe. Also, if the, uh, if the, if the, if the statistic, which is P or mu, if P or whatever that is, if that's outside the interval, then you'll also reject HL. And the next sentence will be, there is sufficient evidence to conclude, and you can write HA right here. And you will write HA in context. You won't just say HA, okay? If the p-value is greater than or equal to alpha, or the um, mu or pi is within the interval, you're going to fail to reject HO. It's going to be your first sentence. It's going to be a real teeny weeny sentence, okay? And you will say there's insufficient evidence to conclude, and then you're going to recite what HA is, okay? Now, I have redone here, again, the meaning of a p-value, okay? If HO is true, it is the probability of getting results we observe by chance. So you could say, this is another way of writing this, if HO is true, then there was a 2% chance of getting these results by chance. That's a great way to put that. That's like the third sentence frame I've given for the meaning of p-value, okay? And then statistically significant is the concept that if the p-value is really low, we, we would say chance is not the reason for this, okay? A great example might be Let's say a basketball player is normally an 80% free throw shooter. He makes eight out of 10. In the big game, he goes one for 15. That is unexplainable by chance, simply unexplainable. You would conclude that there's something wrong with him. You wouldn't conclude that this, was, this would happen by chance because going one for 15 would never happen, really, essentially, if you're normally an eight for 10 guy. OK, that's the concept of statistically significant. OK, so let's roll down here to a uh, conclusion for each statement. OK, <clears throat> um, the first one here. Um, if your if your p value is 0.07, let me get up. Oh, there we go. If your p value is 0.07 right here and the alpha level is 0.05. That is bigger than alpha. So your first sentence will be fail to reject HO at alpha 05. That's pretty scripted. That's standard. And then you will say with a p-value of 0.07, there is insufficient evidence to conclude. And you're going to rewrite HA. Don't write HA. Write what it is in context. Okay. Question B. And again, you're going to have to stop and the video and write these because I'm talking too fast for this. Okay. If your alpha level is 1%, you, okay, and your confidence interval is, this is your confidence interval, okay, right here. And in this case, we're just saying mu is zero. The, in, other, in other words, HO 
mu equals zero. H A, you know, mu is not zero or something like that. We're just using zero as the number in the problem, okay? You're gonna ask yourself in the confidence interval, is zero in that interval? Yes, it is. Meaning zero is still a likely outcome, or I shouldn't say likely, a possible outcome. So you're gonna to fail to reject. The interval did not capture zero. So there is insufficient evidence to conclude HA. And again, you write HA out in context, okay? And they may not even give you alpha for a confidence interval. So you may actually not write that. You might just say fail to reject HO and then say the interval did not capture zero. And by the way, it's not always zero. It's going to be if, a, if, if HO is mu equals 70. If 70 is in the interval, it's the same idea. I'm just using zero as an example. Zero is actually a common number for um, a mu thing. And I'll show, that'll, that'll come up later in the chapter. Okay. All right, let's go to C for item C. Let's say alpha is 10% and the p-value is really gigantic, 0.22. Let me recite real quick what the p-value means. There is a 22% chance that we would get data um, like this by chance, okay? Even if HO is true. That's, all, that's really common. That's one fifth of the time we'd get data like this. So that is for sure a fail to reject. And then with the p-value of 0.22, there is insufficient evidence to conclude and then write down whatever HA is, okay? These sentence frames are invaluable to help you write better. They are not the only way to write these, but they're an excellent start. And then as you get better at it, you'll branch out and become more creative given the, the circumstances of the problem. Okay, now the confidence interval here is between 8%, or I'm sorry, between 0.08 and 3.99. Zero is not in there. So we don't think zero is a possible answer, okay? Now again, it's not always zero, it's whatever HO is, mu equals and whatever number that is, I'm just using zero for academia right now to help us learn. And you're probably not writing the at alpha part, you're probably just saying reject HO. You might if they give it to you. Reject HO, the interval did not capture zero, so there is, there is, um, so, so there is sufficient evidence to conclude HA. And again, write HA out in context, okay? All right, item E. Okay, alpha is really low, 1%, and the p-value is under it. It is below it. So that's a reject HO. This is really rare. Whatever, whatever statistic you got would only happen about 0.8% of the time. So again, the meaning of p-value would be there is a 0.8% chance we would get data like this by chance, even if HO is true. Well, that's so rare that you think HO is probably not true. So I'm gonna reject it. And then with the p-value of 0.008, there is sufficient evidence to conclude HA. I use sufficient and insufficient, but people use different words. Again, this is just one sentence frame you can use. All right, <clears throat> item F, here's your confidence interval. 8 plus or minus 10, do the math on that. That's between negative 2 and 18. Is zero in there? Yes, zero is in there. Meaning that it's very possible HO is true because HO mu equals zero, okay, in this case. So I'm going to fail to reject that. And again, you're probably not writing the, the alpha statement, probably not. The interval uh, uh, did capture zero, so there is insufficient evidence to conclude HA, okay? Now, G and H, let me slide these down so we can get them, the last four here. Okay, alpha is 0.05, so your alpha level is 5%. If something happens rarer than 5% of the time, we're going to reject HO, and the p-value came in small. Again, that p-value means there is a 1% chance we would get data this extreme, even if HO is true. Great sentence frame. But what do I do with this? I'm gonna reject it. Reject HO at alpha 05 with the p-value of 1%, there is sufficient evidence to conclude HA. And again, you'll write out HA in context. You will not write HA, okay? I, okay, alpha is 05. Here's your confidence level, all right. 
negative 11 plus or minus 11 puts that at between zero and 22, I think. No, I'm sorry. Clear that quickly. That different. That comes. It comes out negative 22 to zero. Okay. And again, zero's in the interval. I mean, it's barely in the interval. So this is a tough one, but it's a fail to reject. The interval did capture zero, so there's insufficient evidence to conclude HA. Um, it's one of those things where that's a close one. The p value with that would be very low. Okay. Um, and then I right here. Okay. Here's I. Um, we got an alpha level of 1% and we got a p value of 0.05. Okay. So this is larger than it didn't make it. So that's failed to reject an alpha 01. But the p value of 5%, there is insufficient evidence to conclude HA. And again, that, that p value means there's a 5% chance that we would get data this extreme even if HO is true. All right, last one. Got to do a little work on the confidence interval here. Uh, this is, uh, was it five plus or minus um, 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 three? So that comes out between two and uh, eight, something like that, okay? And zero's not in there. So we're gonna reject HO. We don't think zero is a possible answer. We think the answer is between two and eight. So HO is not there. So we're gonna reject that as a, as a possible answer. The interval did not capture zero. So there is sufficient evidence to conclude HA. Okay, so that's how you write a conclusion. That's overkill. I put so many examples there, but if you did that slowly with me, it'll start to sink in. Okay, okay, real quick again. Um, type one and type two errors. Type one and type two errors are a false positive and a false negative. In general, it's in the medical sense, okay? When you're doing a study, there's only four things that can happen, okay? And again, type one and type two errors are common sense, okay? Let's just think of a story, something like, I don't care what you do in life, four things can happen, okay? So let's take a Let's take a, a really big, important decision you have to make getting married, okay? There are four things that can happen. You could get married and it could turn out great, okay? That's a good decision. You could not get married and it would have turned out poorly. That's also actually a good decision. So those, are, those are two. But there's two errors. You could get married and it turns out poorly, that's an error, or you could not get married and it turns out it would have been great. That's also an error. One of them is an error of opportunity and the other one is it's just an error that plays out. Now, at the high school level, the error might be, take the marriage error, let's take it something simple like you're gonna ask a person out to the dance, okay? And so, you could ask the person and you would have had a good time. Okay, you ask the person, they say yes, that you have a good time, perfect. You don't ask the person and it wouldn't have been fun, okay? That's good, you save yourself a lot of hassle. But there's that, I asked her to the dance or he or she and it didn't turn out well, that's an error. Or I didn't ask her and they really wanted to go and it would have been great, that's another error. Those are, those are the errors. I don't care what you do. There's four things that can happen. You do it or you don't, and it's a good choice or a bad choice either way. All right. So if HO is true and you're finding when you're, when you're just, when you're just kind of thinking about what to do, if HO is true and in reality, it's also true, that's a good decision. I'll put a smiley face. I'll throw that in. Okay. But in your finding, you find that HO is true, but in reality, HA is true, that's an error type. That's a type two error, okay? Type one error is down here, and this is also a good decision. What I did here was basically, I did that in story format for you. Okay, most kids like this a little bit better. <clears throat> they like the next part. If you reject HO, you are hopefully making a good, good decision, but there's a possible, type one error. It doesn't mean there is an error, just a possibility of you're running the risk of that. 
Okay. If you fail to reject HO, you are running the risk of a type two error. Okay. Let's do another story. Okay. Let's say you're a scientist and the and you're going to do a rocket launch. Okay. With a big rocket going into space. Okay. And TV is watching this. And there you got advertisers and it's a big deal. Okay. This happened when I was a kid all the time. Okay. So <clears throat> you could launch the rocket and it's successful. That would be good. You could say, hey, we got a problem here. One of the sectors is testing poorly. I suggest we do not launch. And you could not launch it and find out later, oh my God, that would have blown up. Great decision. But there's two errors, okay? One of them is you could think the rocket's ready to go and you could launch it, okay? And if that happened and it blew up, that's an error. Or you could say, hey, I don't think it's ready to go and keep it grounded. And then you find out later, oh, it was a misreading. We, we could have launched, okay? There's a consequence to that. It's not blowing up, but it's like losing advertising or losing face or something like that. One of them is obviously worse than the other one. So you're gonna err, you're gonna err on the side of keeping the thing grounded, okay? And that's the adjustment statisticians have to make. Which air type are you willing to make? Okay. So that's one thing I like to tell kids is um, when you get into the probabilities of errors, this is really good. I really enjoy this conversation here. <clears throat> um, but when you get into the possibilities of errors, okay, the probability of a type one error is alpha itself. So if alpha is 0.05, you have a 5% chance of making that error. Now, if that error is, if, if, if the type one error is no big deal, you can actually increase the situation to 0.10, okay? If the type one error is catastrophic, then you're gonna wanna drop the type one error down so you don't make it, okay? Now, whenever you adjust alpha, beta adjusts as well. OK, now, first of all, beta is not one minus alpha. OK, let me give you a sense of how this works. In statistics, you have a little continuum here. OK, OK, so let's say alpha is down here. It's five percent. The correct decision is really common. Most of the time, the correct decision happens. But beta lurks as well. OK. Now, if you want to get rid of, by the way, we do not teach you how to calculate beta in this class. We do not teach you how to calculate beta in this class. But I'll tell you this, if you lower alpha, you will increase beta, okay? And if you um, raise alpha, you'll lower beta. They work backwards of each other, okay, to some degree. And then sample size N, sample size N, if you increase it, that also lowers alpha. I mean, lowers beta, lowers beta. Alpha is always set. Humans set that, 1% or 5%. But if you increase N, beta lowers. And that makes sense because the more information you get, the less likely you'll make an error. But it comes off of the beta side, okay? And the power of a test is, uh, there's something called power. Power is the test's ability to detect a, a false HO or a true HA, okay? And it's actually, it's actually one minus beta is power, by the way. One minus beta is power, okay? So um, all that is said pretty quickly. Get it dialed in on paper. And then when we start practicing together as a group on these questions, it'll make sense. The first two days of this, day one and day two, it's a lot of note taking and it, it's going to take time to absorb. But just get it down. Get the encyclopedia materials there. You're not going to master this, but you will when we start doing the practice problems. OK. All right. So we are going to go through uh, all of the examples above. And we're going to want see if you have a type one or type two error. This is a possible type two error. I keep putting the word possibility. It means it's 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 in the realm. Okay. All right. So for the first one, okay, we one a we failed to reject HO. 
if you fail to reject HO, you have a possible type 2 error. You don't have a type 1 error possibility at all. But if you fail to reject, you're running the risk of a type 2 error. So you, you got to be careful, okay? In 2B, 2B, we also failed to reject. And so to, when you fail to reject, <clears throat> there is a possible type 2 error. There is no possibility of a type uh, 1 error when you fail to reject. All right. And then I'll do a few of these and I'll let you copy the rest down. For C, um, C, C, we also failed to reject. Okay. So we already know that's a possible type 2 error. All right. For D, for D, we reject, for D and E, D and E, we, we rejected HO. So if you notice on D and E, um, for D, there is a possible type 1 error, okay? There is no possibility of a type 2 error, but you could have a type 1, all right? And then E is also the possibility of a type 1 error, okay? I'm going to stop there, but this is pretty easy. I'm not sure, sure you have to write down possibility every time. You can just write this, the numbers 1 and 2. I don't think you need to write all this. But I want to emphasize, when you draw a conclusion, it doesn't mean you have an error. It means there's a possibility of it, and you need to examine that. Okay. Okay. So pause right here and get this written down and walk through them yourselves. Okay. Then the next thing we're going to do, this is going to be fantastic. We're going to do some complete inference tests with support. So I have some support for you with sentence frames, et cetera. And I am also going to break out the calculator and show you the shortcut, which you are going to absolutely love. Remember, we didn't do the shortcut in day one. We'll do it here, okay? All right, so this is going to be great. Okay, so hypothesis test. And we're going to start putting this all together. Okay, so let me make this a little smaller here so I can't quite squeeze it all in. A little smaller. Okay. All right, so, oops, get this thing perfect here. All right, so we got, um, okay, a drug company claims that people suffer side effects of their cholesterol drug 8% of the time. Okay, this is perfect. And, and you guess most kids understand drug companies and testing, et cetera. 8% of the time for side effects is a lot, okay? Depending on what the side effect is, okay. Of the 150 people polled, 18 suffered the side effect. Is there evidence to suggest the rate of side effects is higher than stated? Okay, higher than stated. Okay, so a couple things here that you notice. This is a proportion test. Okay, this is a proportion test. And so if you're looking at these notes, scratch this out. Where you, we're doing Z's right here. We should be doing a Z right here because it's a proportion. Sorry about that. What am I thinking? Okay. So let's try this. <clears throat> All right. Um, eight, 18 out of 150. Let's just talk here. That is 12%. Okay. 12% is higher than 8% for sure. Okay. But does that mean for sure? that um, we have proven something? Or could you have gotten 12% by chance? It's a really good question. Okay, so our HO, okay, is gonna be P equals, now again, you might write pi, pi equals 0.08, and then we're suspicious that pi is greater than 0.08. We think it could be higher. All right, our assumptions. This is the SPIN acronym. Let me erase this real quick. This is the SPIN acronym. Okay. This is a Z right here. Okay, S-P-I-N. Don't get ahead of me now because I'm going to do this part differently. I know you have this on your notes, but I'm going to do it differently. It's going to be cool. Okay, we have a representative sample of drug takers. Okay, we're assuming the population is at least 10 times the sample size, so there's at least 1,500 drug takers. That's this times this, the 10% rule. 
each reaction of the drug is independent and the sample size is large enough, I, I go n times p greater than 10 and n times 1 minus p greater than 10. All right. Now, in the test statistic, you're going to love this. You're going to absolutely love this. Check this out, what I'm going to do. Okay. Check this out. Okay. We're going to go to a calculator. Check it out. We're going to go stat and we're going to arrow over to tests. Okay. This is a one proportion Z test. It's a proportion, so they do Zs. Watch what we're going to do. This circumvents it all. Okay, P sub null, that was 0 0.08. Just put HO in there, okay? And then it was uh, 18 of the 150 people. And we're going to go to greater than right here, okay? <clears throat> We're going to calculate this. I'm going to draw it out. Watch this. Oh, dimension mismatch. What did I do? Okay, y equals get rid of these. That's probably what's going on. I'll go second y. This is good for you guys too. Second y equals and turn all the plots off. That's four. Okay, try it again. Stat tests one prop z test. Got it all in there. This is so great. It, it circumvents the need to do a lot of stuff. Look at this. Isn't that great? Okay, so what you're going to write down on your paper is you're going to write down uh, the Z score and the P value, 0.035, and shade it in. It did it all for you. It took the whole thing and did it for you. So this was uh, 0.08 was here, right? And this was... 0 0.08, 0 0.92 over 150 is standard deviation. But we never had to do that. Okay, look at that. Isn't that great what it did? So get that written down. And the p value was about 3.5%. So there's a 3.5% chance we would get data like we did by chance, even if HO is true. And HO is, there's an 8% um, probability of the side effect. So there's a chance this could happen just randomly, okay? There's a chance. Okay, let me clear this. Let me go back to this right here. Now, this is done the long way right here. And by the way, this should have been a Z score. This is a Z, not a T, okay? That's how you do it the long way. What's great is it got circumvented and it got it all done by itself, okay? All right. Now, at this time, I'm going to switch over to... Um, I'm going to get a blank one of these. We're going to work on the, the rest of them blank by myself, okay? I just wanted to show you that. So don't write down 3B. I'm going to do it differently, okay? Okay, for 3B, we're going to do this without any scaffolds here. I mean, without any pre-written stuff. Wheel of Wealth, okay? Kind of like Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Wealth, yeah, yeah. Claims that a cash price of $100 or more is awarded 30% of the time. However, a gambler tracked the last 80 spins and noticed that there were only 21 cash prices of $100 or more. Is the Conceito game inflating their proportion of wins? All right. Inflating is a greater than symbol. So here's your hypothesis. You ask yourself, is this a mean or is this a proportion? This is definitely a proportion. So HO, pi equals 0 0.30. And HA, pi is greater than 0 0.3. We suspect that it's more than 30%. Okay? Assumptions. This is the SPIN part here. Assume we have a representative sample of spins, right? Okay? The population size is at least 10 times n. So the population is definitely greater than 800. You can spin it more than 100 times, all right? That's just 10 times 80. Each spin is independent. And is the sample size large enough? For proportion, we're going to check, okay? We're going to go, uh, let's see here, 80 times 0.3, and that's greater than 10, I think. And then we're going to go 80 times 0.7. That's also greater than 10. Okay? 
All right. Now we are going to use our do our test statistic now, but we're going to do it with the calculator. Okay. So we got 21 out of 80, and we're testing greater than 30%. All right. So let's check it out. Okay. We scroll down here so we can draw this out. So get ready to draw. And this is a really good example how to do it. You're going to draw this. And it's going to look like you did it all by hand, but you didn't. Okay. So put HO right here, pi equals 0.3. Okay. Pi equals 0.3. Then do the standard deviation. Okay. P, 1 minus P, which is 0.7 over N, which was 80. Don't bother to calculate it. Okay. And then we got to figure out what 21 out of 80 is. Okay. So let me bring the calculator up. Clear this real quick. Clear. 21 divided by 80. That's 26%. That's awfully close to 30. I mean, that's pretty explainable by chance, I would think. But that's okay. So 0.2625 is that is that number. So I'm going to go ahead and run the test real quick. Okay, here we go. Stat tests, and this is a proportion test. So it's a one prop Z test. So we're testing for 0 0.30 but it's 21 divided by 80, which is about 26%. That's probably explainable by chance. And we're thinking it's probably, it should be, uh, should be less than, I think I put grid, it should be less than that though. Okay, wondering if this is falsely less. Okay, all right, I'm gonna click draw. Yeah, that would happen 23% uh, of the time, 23% of the time, all right, so. 0.73 is the z-score and 0.2321. Okay, so what we got is, um, right, this was 0.2625, that was 21 out of 80. And then the z-score was 0.73 and this is 0.2321. That is awfully big, 23% chance. Again, that means there's a 23% chance we would get data like this, even if HO is true. HO being true is 30%. So there's no evidence here. There's not enough evidence, okay? So let's bring back the other thing to get the conclusion, okay, to make it a little quicker for me, okay? So the conclusion would be fail to reject HO at 05 because the p-value is pretty big we have insufficient evidence to conclude HA, okay? No problem, all right. Now, again, we got a couple more proportion problems. I'm gonna do these by hand. Don't copy this down. I think I, you can use T's for proportions, it's complicated, but I like to use Z. So let's just go back to the other ones and let's do three and four together, okay? All right, um, by the way, in question B here, because you fail to reject, there's a possible type two error possible. Okay, and we'll get into the specifics of what that is later. Okay, all right. Let's do C, okay. John is considering running for ASB president. A random sample of 40 students shows that 16 of them would vote for John. Should John still consider running or should he suspend his campaign? They never quit, they suspend their campaign. All right, that's a small sample size, okay. Well, First of all, it takes 50% to win. So HO, pi is 0.5, okay? And uh, where he's the alternate, he's, wonder, he's wondering if he's got less than 50% for sure, okay? Our assumptions, we assume we have a representative sample of voters, okay? The population is at least 10 times N, so there's gotta be more than 400 voters, which hopefully there is. Okay, each voter is independent, let's hope. And then the sample size is large. Is it large enough? Let's check it out. 40 times 0.5, that's greater than 10. And then 40 times one minus 0.5, which is also 0.5, that's greater than 10, we're good. Okay, we're good. Now let's run our test statistic. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so let me scroll down, let's run this now. 
So um, draw your normal curve, because we have one. All right, normal curve. All right. Let's get it all set up. 0. 0.5 is the middle number. Pi equals 0. 0.5. Here's his standard deviation. Don't bother to calculate it, but just set it up, and it looks like you did it all by hand, which is great over 40. OK? Now, real quick, 16 40ths. Let me just figure out what this is real quick. OK. 16 divided by 40 is 0.4. So he's only, his sample only came in at 40%. The problem is he, it's such a small sample that maybe it's pretty common. I don't know how common it is. We're just going to write 0.4. That's P hat. That's his sample. Okay. All right. Well, let's figure out what we got here. So I'm going to leave that up. And I'm going to bring back the calculator, OK? We're not going to do this all by hand. We're going to use a calculator to do this, OK? So I'm going to go stat over to tests, one prop Z test. All right, we're checking for 0.5. Is there evidence that it's a lot less than that? Because he's concerned that it is. 1640s, is that bad? Well, 2040th, and he's in the game. So this is only four votes off. It doesn't seem like it's that bad to me because of the small sample. So even though he's 10% off, it's such a small sample size. I think chance can explain this. Sure enough, it's 10%. It's running at 10%. Okay, it's running. So you're going to write, so the rest of this, when you write this out, you're going to write out, um, you know, your Z score is Z is uh negative 1.26 and then the p value is uh 0.103 right shade that in so that's let me go back to the sheet there that's what it's going to look like on that okay and then your conclusion is going to be okay uh reject ho at i don't know what i wrote here for the alpha level. Did I write anything? No, I didn't write anything. So I'm going to write reject HO at alpha. I'll just do 0 0.01. Okay. 0 0.01. And then I'm just going to write the word insufficient. We have insufficient evidence to suggest that he should drop out of the race. We don't really have evidence. I mean, he can if he wants, but 16 out of 40 is not strange enough to rule out that you could still be in the game. Okay, that's the idea. Now by, by um, oh man, I wrote reject HO, I'm so bad. Guys, listen, hold on, hold on. Fail to reject HO, man, glad I caught that. Fail to reject HO at 01, it's bigger than HO. Bigger than HO. We have insufficient evidence, got it. So I wrote it in red there. Okay. I think this is the last one. And by the way, when you fail to reject HO, you run the risk of a type two error. Type two error would be he should have quit. <laughs> and he's wasting his time and money going into this. Okay. All right. Um, last one. Cereal brand claims that 25% of its cereal pieces is dried fruits. The rest is grains. Oh, yeah. Sure. A random sample of a scoop of 30 boxes found only 11% is dried fruits. Is the company misstating its numbers? All right, misstating is a tricky one. Does that mean not equal to, or does that mean less than? I'm not really sure, but HO is going to be pi equals 0.25. 25% of its deal there. And HA, I'm going to say it's going to be less than 0.25 because I misstating, they're not going to give you more dried fruit. They're going to give you less because fruit's expensive, right? It's all, you know, economical. Okay, less than 0.25. All right, assume we have a representative sample of cereal. Okay, the population is at least 10 times the sample size. So there were 30 boxes, 30 boxes. So um 300 each box is independent i'm not sure we have enough sample size here i'm not sure we do what is 30 times 0.25 that's not bigger than 10 
That's, that is not greater than 10. And 30 times 0.75, I think that's bigger than 10. We figure out what 30 times 0.25 is. That can't be much. 30 times 0.25. It's only seven and a half. So we're really lax sample size. Now listen, if you lack enough sample sizes, you are not supposed to run the test. You're, you're done. Like, no, we don't have enough samples. There's nothing here we can do. For the sake of academia, let's just run the test so you can practice it. But just keep in mind, you would not do that. Okay, all right. Let me scroll down here and let's run this thing. Okay, so here we go. There's one part that's a little hard on this. So 25% is what we're thinking. And this will be 0 0.25, 0 0.75 over 30, okay? Now, I don't know what 11, let's say 11% of the 30, what number is that? 30 times 0.11, that's 3.3. .3. I guess that's three. It's more like 10%. You really can't get 11. That's a weird problem, okay? But it comes out about 10%, right? 11% of 30 is like 3.3 out of 30, which is impossible, but that's okay. This problem is really one you shouldn't be doing because it, it lacks sample size according to our little quick little test up here. All right, no problem. We're gonna do it anyways, okay? So let's bring up the calculator. It'll do it anyhow. Stat, te test, one prop Z test, and then this will be uh, 0.25, and this will be um, three out of 30, it's 10% actually, okay? And we're thinking it's less than we're gonna go ahead and draw, calculate this thing out. Okay. You know, there's a, that's, that's, that's not much, it's 0 0.0389. So this is a little unusual, but so if I wrote this out, I would write the Z score is negative 0 0.1.90 and the P value is 0 0.0289. Okay, that's really small. Okay, so let me remove this thing right here let's remove this guy okay 0289 and the conclusion and again would be it depends if it's 01 or 05 let's just pick 05 so i'm going to reject reject ho at alpha 05 if it was 01 it would be fail to reject so it does matter what your level of proof is it does matter Okay, and that makes sense. We all know that we prove things at different levels. Reject HO at 05. We have sufficient, sufficient, sufficient evidence to conclude. And I'll write HA, but it would be to conclude that they are giving less cereal. That would be the full thing. And when you reject HO, you are running the risk of a type one error, okay? All right. That is chapter nine, day two. Those are the two long days. And now we're gonna be doing practice problems all together. All right, hope you enjoyed.